we've been talking about uh, software, but I imagine the same concepts apply to data. If you gather the data, if you paid a lot of money for the data, process the data, uh, there's a natural uh, fit in play for some of the same concepts of data sharing and uh, um, not paying twice and so forth mm -hmm. uh, in, that, in that sense well, as well. That's a massive issue in our space, as you, can, yeah. as you know, and I mean, for um, and changing. It's, it's interesting, and maybe open source is, well, it's, it's actually interestingly, the foundation, so geo data or map data is one of those things that is, uh, um, has not historically been very accessible and very much, uh, the U.S. was really the leader in terms of the first to be able to say, we collect this kind of data, freedom, we're going to make it available, any data collected by our government or, or produced by the government is going to be available. But that's not, um, it's taken a while for the rest of the world to catch up. Now Canada has uh, really moved ahead uh, mm -hmm. recently, much more quickly on that front, so that's good to see. Um, but it is one of those areas, and it's an interesting one where, um, this is a tie back into that, the uh, foundation question. I remember when we were setting up the uh, Open Source Geospatial Foundation, um, th we had some meetings of you know, all the key people that were involved and what should be the key you know, areas that we focus on and access to free open geodata was a big sort of theme that popped out of this. Mm -hmm. Not software, but it was very related and and and, flew in this. and the next thing you know, there was a committee form to look into dealing with this and start to provide mm -hmm. suggestions on how should policy be working within government. And again, this brings that sort of linkage to coming to government because government is the largest producer of geospatial data mm -hmm. around. You know, ultimately, as much as there are commercial companies doing it, at the end of the day, government is the biggest producer. So, you know, in our realm, it is a big, big deal. And I think there's a lot of um, there's a lot of things happening now just to recognize, you know, there's licensing differences between data and software and how do we address this, but uh, certainly big progress being made on that front. And, um, you know, I assume there's probably some other areas where some good lessons learned from that process. Yes, and something that comes to mind immediately would be uh, certainly in Canada, uh, healthcare. So not running tests twice, three times, but, you know, uh, mm -hmm. there's been certain co uh, significant cost shift savings and be able to yeah. share data securely, reliably, and, and reduce re uh, inefficiency in the system. So. Uh, any other comments uh, on that? Uh, let's say that, that, that there's there's um, certainly that, that there's there's so much software that is being developed for and by the government that having a, a bias towards open source would be would be a huge thing to go off and to reduce the uh, or even when you're using open source there's there's a uh, you know there's so many government departments who are using MediaWiki right now um, as a wiki platform which is great to see but there's not a lot of talk about the fact that there there that there is a u this use of MediaWiki and that it is open source and you can let's have a get together and have a discussion between departments about how to use MediaWiki and how do we fit Medi MediaWiki into our network solutions so that that it's not doesn't have to be hidden underneath somebody's desk like it is right now so many <laughs> government departments are sort of hiding away the, you know, the wiki implementation because it doesn't quite fit with their their uh, the micro the Microsoft networking sort of package that they've been sold. You have to hide it away from the, uh, the networking like. people. Uh, but but there's there's uh, I think there's also this whole challenge about um, you know now we're going to uh, we're going through a phase where there are our governments who are our, uh, where departments or branches are being cut. And what happens to the software that was, was developed then for those departments? Um, I think that there's, there's, there should be an obligation, even if there isn't the staff to go off and to maintain and to build an ecosystem around that software, just to know that the software that was developed, if, if a project mm. is, you know, let's say the gun registry, if that ever does get killed, mm. it would be interesting to find out, well, what was all that software behind that registry and what could be learned from that and to make that available to the Canadian public as a as a reference. I mean, so inventory and warehouse, I guess is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. You know. like, I would never go to the lines of code to be the gun registry, <laughs> but I'd like to know that, it, that somebody could. <laughs> you know, I'd like to know that that was available as an, as an auditor to learn from it or see if there's any techniques or any value in the, the coding around that that would be, that could be shared in another, in another realm. Um, and um, so, so I'd, I'd love to see see government um, adopt these sort of measures around open source uh, to reduce costs and to to improve effectiveness both between government departments and between different governmental uh, layers as well. Because the, certain the federal government has a lot more resources than the provincial governments do, which have a lot more resources than the municipal governments do.